Hi, I'm Lee Robinson from Keep It Simple Archery. Thank you for watching our videos. On this video, we're going to talk about carbon, fiberglass, and phenolic. Of course, all of these are modern synthetic materials that um, are used in the traditional bow and can be used very effectively. First, let's discuss fiberglass. I only use Gordon Composites fiberglass in my bows. I believe that they are the industry standard for the archery industry and that they make the best glass. Now they make several different types of glass. They make uh, fiberglass designed to be used in the core, which I personally don't use, um, so I'm not going to discuss those in detail. I will basically say the reason I don't use core glass is because fiberglass is a heavy material and the core is, a, is where the shear occurs. It's not a tension or a compression point and so I don't want to add a lot of weight to my lens. So I don't use uh, core glass. I only use glass on the back of the bow or the belly of the bow. And for the back and the belly, there are only two types of glass that are readily used. And that is either E-glass or S-glass. Now S-glass is also known as ULZ glass. From here on in the video, I'm going to refer to as S-glass as ULZ glass. E-glass is also known as either UL or ULS. I'm going to refer to E-glass as either UL glass or ULS glass for the remainder of this video. Now, the ULZ glass is available in what's called natural, which is kind of like a cloudy, murky, um, milky looking version of clear. It's not a really good looking uh, type of glass and if you received it in a bow you would probably complain about it. And then of course it's available in colored glasses such as black and maybe some other colors. But we we only buy the ULZ glass in black because again you wouldn't like the natural version. When I use clear glass I use the ULS or the UL glass depending on the poundage and pull weight of the bow. Now personally I prefer the ULS glass and I'm going to use the ULS over the UL glass in most cases. An exception would be if you have a veneer and we want to see that veneer and we have carbon and we want to minimize the role that the glass is playing, maximize the role that the carbon is playing. In those cases I will use the UL glass and it will perform very well. Now what I really wanted to illustrate is why use the ULZ glass. I use ULZ glass on the back over the carbon because it is a superior glass to the ULS and the UL glass. Both UL and ULS are excellent glasses, but if you go to Gordon Composites and you look at the strengths, the compression and tension strengths of their glasses, you will see the ULZ glass does have the superior test strengths. So therefore, when we're using carbon in our bow and it's on the back side of the bow, with fiberglass directly over it. This fiberglass will protect that carbon uh, the most effectively from when you hit, it, hit a tree stand or a ladder or bouncing it around. It's going to be the toughest glass. It's also going to provide the highest tension when you're pulling on the bow and therefore I like the black glass. Now we, of course we can cover that black glass with snakeskin should you wish to uh, for something that's more cosmetic. Now in this bow here I'm going to have actually the UL glass, which again is still an excellent glass. We stick with Gordon for that reason. They know what they're doing. They have perfected their glasses. And this glass is as thin as I can get the UL glass because we're using a thin glass and a thin veneer with the carbon. You may see that black stripe in the bow. It's a little hard to see next to that Bacote, but you can see it if you look close. And that carbon needs to be on the back side, as close to the back side as possible. So we're going to use a very thin glass here. Now the ULS glass is what we use on the belly. Here we have a little bit thicker glass. Unless you're running a, like a youth bow series or a very light full weight bow, and we need to drop down to a thinner glass. Now, you might ask, well why is the thinner glass not available in ULS? The S in ULS stands for scrim. 
crimp means it has a fiber going in it crossways like this. It's woven in and out of the vertical fibers that run up and down in all of the glasses. This scrim will prevent, help prevent the glass from cracking and separating. Whether it be here on the sight window or in the tips where the, where the string groove comes, the string runs down, we don't want this to split. So I've never had one split of any of the glasses, but because I feel like the scrim does add a little bit, I do like to use the scrim when on the belly of the bow, especially when the string impacts the bow. Now, why phenolic? We covered the oh, and why carbon? Carbon is a lightweight material with a very, very high tension strength. Carbon does not excel on the compression side to the same degree that it does on the tension side. So therefore, it needs to be on the back of the bow. The back of the bow is the area that is stretched when you draw the bow. As I draw this bow, this side is stretching and this side is compressing. The carbon should be on the back of the bow, as close to the back as possible. There are some archers or bowyers that are uh, using the carbon on the belly of the bow and they've had mixed results. Some of them are doing okay and some of them are having some failure issues. So we just use it on the back of the bow because that's where it really excels. Carbon is sensitive to some types of compression. You can take a fishing rod that's fiberglass or graphite fishing rod and pull and pull and pull on it and it'll hold real well. Uh, slam it in a car door, step on it, something like that, it'll crack. It, it doesn't do well with all types of compression, so that's why we put the glass over it to help protect it. There have been some bowyers that have put carbon on the back without covering it with anything, and again, the results have been mixed. Some of them have done well, some of them have had delamination or, or failure issues. In my opinion, the carbon should be covered with glass and only be used on the flat back. Now, let me get back to the finale. Opinions will vary on phenolic. It is a heavy material. Pretty much everybody agrees with that. It is hard to work with with tools. It's very hard on sandpaper and saw blades. Most bowyers will agree with that. Carbon, while sometimes is, excuse me, fiberglass, while sometimes is easier to stand, is very hard on uh, belt band saws and saw blades and things like that. So. Regardless of whether it was fiberglass or carbon, you're still going to wear out your, your tool, tools with that. So, but why do I use it? I use it for several reasons. In the tips, it has very high abrasion resistance. The tips are where your bows get knocked around, they bang into stuff. I want a high abrasion resistance there. Plus, high modulus polyethylene fibers, such as Dynaflight, Fast Flight, 450 Plus, and there are many others, D10 is an excellent string. These strings uh, provide less stretch, and because they provide less stretch, they are harder on the bow. Again, I've never had a failure, but the phenolic, I feel, ensures the bow's durability. Fiberglass could be used there if you wish to use it, but fiberglass is really strong one way. Fiberglass, if you bend it this way, it's very strong. You bend it this way, and it's not as strong. The phenolic, no matter how you turn it, it may not be as strong as fiberglass in the strong way, but it's much stronger than fiberglass in fiberglass's weak way. No matter how you turn the phenolic, it's going to be strong in every direction. I like that. Okay? Because we don't want the limb to split or crack off. This way is one type of strength. Splitting is another type of strength. If you position the fiberglass to do well for splitting, then it's not so well for cracking. If you prevent it, or for breaking off. If you position it so it doesn't break off with the fibers running this away, that's good, it won't break off, but now it's more prone to split. So you rob a Peter to pay Paul type of situation, and I don't like those types of situations. Phenolic, again, being strong in every direction, I choose it. The other thing, the reason why I've chose to laminate my bows with phenolic is one of the things that I have noticed is fiberglass transmits shock. Phenolic absorbs shock. I can't explain why, I just know that uh, phenolic behaves more like, in my opinion, it behaves more like a wood. 
rather than a um, piece of metal or something. You know, it's not fiberglass, it's not metal, I realize that, but it transmits shock. When I shoot, I want this bow to not have a lot of hand shock, so I choose phenolic as uh, the reinforcement of my riser. So it has a high abrasion resistance, it's a high strength, it has uh, shock absorption qualities, and I feel like all of those are, are strong reasons why to use phenolic. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at keepitsimplearchery.com or keepitsimplearchery at gmail.com or give me a call. Thanks for watching.